So maybe this is a good uh, point to kind of delve into what exactly we've been working on with Canada Basketball over the past four years. Um, you've been with the team for how many years now? Five. Five. So going into your fifth year now, you started in 2016, before 2016? Yeah, 2016. Um, I spent like a tinsy bit of time with you guys pre uh, Rio. I but I was, I was just observing and, you know, like a deer in headlights type training camp for me. I think you were actually super nice to me when I was leaving. You were giving me advice on what to wear because um, yeah. I had seen Paige in a, in a long time. <laughs> exactly. I totally, I was recruited yeah. for the, the fashion uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, similar moment, I guess. <laughs> I, I remember thinking, um, I remember thinking like, geez, you know, maybe these like, you know, multi-time Olympians are just human beings. Like that was the moment for me where I was like, you can just converse <laughs> with these people. <laughs> what a revelation. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird, right? Like you just, the world pumps up, uh, you know, athletes of your caliber in a in a way that's it's so uh, deserved in in its own way, but also it's like not realistic yeah. at all. Yeah, it is, yeah, it's a strange dynamic to be in. Absolutely, yeah. that's for sure. Um, so over these past four or five years that that we've been together, um, we've been laying steadily a groundwork to bolster our culture. We've always had a, a, a distinct and strong culture in the team of basketball um, because like even over my career, I've been with the team 10 years now and it has gone through a progression, but always has still held those dreams at the beginning um, when I came into the program, you know, just like that grit, that pride, mm -hmm. uh, that selflessness that each athlete who's coming into the program is required to bring to each practice and game and meeting actually all events. As soon as you like get off the plane and you're in Canada basketball mode, you know that you're held to a much higher standard than, than mm -hmm. you are um, anywhere else in your life. And I, and I love that about Canada basketball. And we've um, worked to really even take that and tweak those little 1% um, to make it something even more incredible. So what are some of those things that we can share um, with the people, um, not giving away any trade secrets or anything or yeah. what we need to for, but uh, some of the things we've been working on? Yeah, and I think I, I, the first thing that came to my mind was like the, the level of neglect that uh, I think I gave to that fourth question, you know, where have we been? Um, I thought at the time that I, I tr you know, I did try and do a good job of capturing like what's going on in this in this space already, as a compass to to do things that built on that. And you absolutely cannot change things too quickly, or it's absolutely going to fail. So that one we probably could have done a much better job of because of all the reasons that you just said, like the the identity of the group was really strong. And I think in a lot of ways was, you know, a huge factor in how you guys have, were able to have success to the level that you did leading up to that. And so it's a big mistake to go, well, we got to change everything because, you know, one result went the way that we didn't want it to go. It's probably just a few things that need to be improved, tweaked, modified. Um, and I'll give you an example of what I think one of those was to get the group to the next level. So if a team has an identity, I think that the, the question to ask is how many people can speak to that identity clearly? Um, how many people relate to it across the, the whole organization if you were to ask them in an in a individual conversation? Mm -hmm. So if, if part of our philosophy you know, in our culture is to run meetings a certain way, to uh, be on time, you know, which means maybe five minutes early, right? In, in like the, the ground truth of what's actually going on in this environment, to not have phones out at, at meals because we value talking to one another. All of these things, 
it, it really, it only gets better when everybody's doing it. It only gets worse when 99 are doing it and one isn't, and that one isn't addressed. So that's like, you know, that saying like, you know, trust can be, uh, it takes years to gain and then it can be broken in a day. Yeah. It's, that's like the fear <laughs> that I live in at all times is like, you know, staff members who aren't fully integrated coming in and presenting. Have we talked, have we had a conversation around what our meetings have looked like and what our principles are for these meetings or are we throwing them into the fire and they come in and do something totally different? Uh, it's off brand. It shows that we're not connected, right? It's that symbol to people that only certain people are aware of who we are. It doesn't work. So I think the biggest challenge is, is not about changing a whole lot. It's more about connecting and aligning everybody on the stuff that really matters across all segments, players that are there all the time, players that are there some of the time, staff that are all in, staff that are, um, you know, a little bit more uh, uh, peripheral. There's no worse moment than, you know, knowing that something is going wrong and everyone's observing it and not knowing who's going to address it. Right, like a new player comes in and they're on their phone at lunch the whole time. It doesn't matter at that point if someone says, hey, you know, you shouldn't be on your phone. We have this, you know, one of our values is being connected. Um, whatever you say there, nothing can change the fact that everyone in the room has just realized something's broken along the way here. Somehow this person didn't know what our values are before they arrived in the room. <laughs> and that's, you know, not an effective uh, environment. On the flip side, when a new person comes or a staff member comes in and presents and this person's not there all the time, and they are immediately aligned with, um, you know, the, the vibe of the group and how we operate, it, it's equally as powerful in the other direction, right? People mm -hmm. know, they go, geez, like, we have people coming in and out and we just keep on ticking, like exactly as we're, you know, designed to. So that, I think that was the biggest change, to be honest, was just, let's get everyone on the bus. You know, we had people on the bus. We had some people watching the bus. We had some people being like, I'm going to take a different bus. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I think something that, that we do really well is continue to reiterate our, our values and what's expected of us. Um, despite the, this history that we've had and, and the, the carryover that we have every year, most of the, most of the people are, are staying the same. We have our core group and then a few people coming in. But every time, at the beginning of the, the season, like the beginning of the summer, we have a moment to kind of come together and be like, okay, this is our identity. These are our rules. Um, and we, we, the team, like everybody together, then agrees on those rules. It's not like a top down, like this is what you need to do. This is mm -hmm. like, no, this is, this is what we want. Um, and we're willing to, to do this. And sometimes coming into an organization, especially one that's like hierarchical in a sense, um, it is just a democratic portion of it, but like, there needs to be some hierarchy in the, uh, in the organization. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes you, you kind of have a sense of losing some, feeling constrained or losing some freedom. But totally. the flip side of that is that you actually, in defining those terms for everybody, everybody is on the same page. And then you do have the freedom to not worry about that everybody is this person mm -hmm. doing this, I have to lose my energy doing this, um, like I need to go talk to that person and, and we need to figure out all these things. We're actually gaining freedom by just making sure that everybody is on the same page. And I find that we kind of conflate those ideas when we talk about that and the rules or expectations, especially when we're all trying to work within a group. It's not the individual that uh, we're worried about. This, this culture, this team, this collective effort to, to feed into something bigger than what we are. 